I want to update pathogenesis and salutogenesis. Many of you have seen this comparison of the two different philosophies. This, however, is an update for 2021. And a lot of this came about after attending a conference for salutogenesis in June of 2021 in, in Morona, Spain. Now you know the existing frameworks. Pathogenesis is about the origins or causes of disease. Now these are really about a lot of responsibilities. I mean, we have a responsibility not to walk in front of a bus if it's coming down the street and doing the right things that we know give a higher probability of causing problems. But most of us have an awful lot of responsibilities. I mean, we, we don't really want more, um, but, but we, need, you know, we need to do the right things. Now, salutogenesis, on the other hand, is about the origins or causes of health. Now, these are complementary frameworks, but it's not that salutogenesis does the same thing in a different way. The salutogenesis is about opportunities. Nobody has to be healthy. Nobody has to create more health. But this is an opportunity of how you can create a better life. Not just a less bad life, but a, a life that you have opportunities you never would have had otherwise. So when we look at the assumptions of pathogenesis and salutogenesis, the biggest first assumption that is differentiates those two is the starting point. Pathogenesis starts from a problem or a disease. I mean, great. It's wonderful. If you have a problem, like when I was in my car accident, I want to make sure that's what they start with and they fix it. It needs to be corrected so that I can live. Now, the starting point of salutogenesis, however, doesn't really exist yet. You have to create an opportunity, an idealized outcome of what could be in the future. And then you, you start from there and think, well, how the heck am I going to get there? Now, so, so pathogenesis is about avoiding those problems, getting rid of those problems. And if you think about it beforehand, it's about avoiding risk factors. Now, salutogenesis, on the other hand, is about approaching a new potential, something that would not be possible otherwise, or just possible from eliminating a problem. So, pathogenesis, in essence, is a reactive issue. You're reacting to disease or a problem or something that occurs or something that could occur in the future. You're thinking, I'd better do something so this doesn't happen, which, of course, results in not anything bad, which is, which is nothing, <laughs> which is good. But we really want better usually, and that's why salutogenesis is proactive to generate better health. Better health that would be possible otherwise. Now, the unique assumptions under these two different philosophies is that although pathogenesis is about disease and problems, it has the assumption that we are inherently healthy. If nothing else is going on, we should be as healthy as we can be. But that's really not true. We know life is like that. So salutogenesis has the assumption, even though salutogenesis is about the causes of health, it says we're inherently flawed, that we have a tendency or a possibility of something bad happening. So we need to go out and get ourselves healthy so when that does happen, we can overcome it or it may not bother us in the first place. So pathogenesis, even though it's about disease, is very idealistic, saying that we're naturally healthy. For salutogenesis, <clears throat> although Antonovsky, the developer of the salutogenesis, called it pessimistic, is really realistic because it's saying, you know, bad things happen. So we need to cause ourselves to be as healthy as we possibly can be. This is really just the second law of thermodynamics because a system left to itself will move towards chaos, which is what happens with pathogenesis. If we're not going to do anything to make ourselves healthy and well, you know what? Bad things happen. I mean, if we don't make our, make our life better, if we want good things to happen, we have to cause them to happen. We need to take action to make the good things happen the way we want them to. Otherwise, we're moving in the opposite direction. So pathogenesis, therefore, is against pain and loss, while salutogenesis is for gain and growth or gain or gain and development. So pathogenesis just kind of prepares one to live, while salutogenesis helps us discover how we can live fully, really get the most we can out of life. Pathogenesis, of course, keeps us from falling back, but salutogenesis is about how we can move forward with more capacity, more potential, and more ability to get what we want and achieve what we want to achieve in life that isn't possible right now, but could be if we develop more. So pathogenesis, of course, can keep us from getting worse, which is fantastic, but salutogenesis is about continual improvement. It doesn't happen maybe every second, every day, every, every month, but as we continue to work on things, we'll have jumps and we'll be able to do things we couldn't have done otherwise, but the opportunities have to also be there. That's why it's continual, not necessarily continuous. 
Now, in pathogenesis, there's an endpoint. The endpoint is neutral. It's nothing. Nothing bad happens. Yay! Which is good, of course. But for salutogenesis, there isn't really no endpoint. It's just a progress point. We're moving towards who we want to be and how we want to come and how we want to contribute to a better world. So we measure gain and we measure benefits that we've brought to society or to ourselves. So pathogenesis is about minimizing problems, or salutogenesis is about optimizing potential. But then, of course, we need to make those potentials real and so it can happen. Now, I've likened this to what Mother Teresa was supposedly had said at one time. Uh, they asked her once, if she'd be in a march against the war. And she said, no, no, I won't be in a march against the war, but I will be in a march for peace. They said, well, what do you mean? What, what's the difference? She said, it's empowering to be for things. It's disempowering to be against things. So salutogenesis is for health. Pathogenesis is against disease. Let's empower ourselves to be for health. Now, how do we use these things in practice? How do we use these pathogenesis and salutogenesis? This is the new update. And the big thing is, pathogenesis is really for the short term. If I have something bad happen to me, I want to be treated really quickly and right away. Where salutogenesis is for life. It's for the long term. So pathogenesis is about acute care. I don't want someone thinking about treating me salutogenically if I've been in a car accident. I want them to take care of me immediately. Salutogenesis is really about chronic care. How do we do a daily things that live and create a better life? So pathogenesis is how we eliminate bad or salutogenesis is generating good. As you know, there's an article out there, salutogenesis 30 years later, that I published in the 2010, where do we go from here? It talks about how this should be the basis for our healthcare system. It's truly about health, not about the absence of disease. You can access it online. I've updated the, the link. You, you can get it. It should be available free online. Also, the European people that are working on salutogenesis have an article they published 10 years after, after this, my article, which is a good article also, and I encourage you to read it. Future Directions for the Concept of Sleep Genesis. It's also available online. Um, this is one link, but if you search, you should be able to find it. Well, thank you again for listening. I appreciate your time, and I hope this helps you understand the ideas and the possibility associated with salutogenesis and how we can move forward with salutogenesis. Please contact me if you have any questions. I'd love to talk to you about salutogenesis. Thanks so much.